Hello! In this slice of physics, I'll be serving up yet another example of a free body diagram. You can never get too much practice with this important step in solving motion problems in physics. Our example today deals with the usual ride we all take in elevator cars. We'll start with an example of somebody riding an elevator car up at a constant speed, and then to give it some context, we'll take the start of the journey at the bottom of the building, where the car moves up and speeds up, and then once the person reaches their destination, the car is still moving up but slowing down to stop at the floor that they desired. So we'll take those three examples and discuss the free body diagrams in those situations. So let's start with the example where the person is moving up in the elevator car at a constant speed. So here's a sketch of the situation. We got the elevator car with the cable that pulls it and we got the person in the car riding up. So just to provide context that they're going at a constant speed up, here's a motion diagram of the person. At every point the person is moving up, the speed is a constant. In the previous examples, when we discussed an elevator car, our whole car was the object of interest. But this time, we're focusing on the person riding in the elevator. So our object of interest is the person here. So let's draw a blue circle around the person to identify all the forces acting on the person. So as usual, starting here at the top and going in a counterclockwise manner, the first time I encounter the object interacting with the environment is down here where the person is standing on the floor. So I've got a normal force that acts straight up from the floor on the person. Remember, normal force is perpendicular to the horizontal surface here, so it's vertical, and it's a supporting force, so it acts upward in this case. Because the person is not moving or trying to slide inside the elevator, we do not have the force of friction to worry about in this case. So as I continue my journey the rest of the loop, I don't have any other force. So in this case, I only have one contact force, which is the normal force. And as usual, we have the force of weight of the person that acts straight down. So what does the free body diagram of the situation look like? Well, your expectation might be that because the person is moving up, the normal force must be larger than the weight because if the normal force is equal to the weight, you might expect that there would be no motion at all. That's one of the common sense expectations that we need to reconcile with to understand how forces work. So one way to discuss it is to look at the constant velocity here and realize that constant velocity implies an acceleration of zero. And given our equation F equals MA, a zero acceleration results in a zero net force. So the net effect of these two forces acting on the person has to be zero. So to draw the free body diagram, I start with representing the object of interest as a dot. And in this case, this represents the person. And then I show my two forces. I got the normal force pointing straight up and a weight that's pointing straight down that's equal in length but opposite in direction to the normal force. So in this case my F net is zero which matches the acceleration of zero or a constant speed. Well you might still be struggling with reconciling this example with your common sense that an equal normal force to weight can move the person up as opposed to just keep them steady at one spot. So let's take the example of when the person starts up at the bottom of the building and now the person starting at rest and then a little bit later they're moving at a slow speed a little bit later they're moving a little bit faster a little bit later they're moving faster still as they get to the cruising speed that they're going to travel with so in this case with the motion moving upward and speeding up I have an acceleration that also points in the upward direction and just for completeness, let me show the loop around the person as usual and identify that the two forces are simply the normal force acting up and the weight acting down. So given that the person was first at rest and then they start moving up, in order to get that person to start moving up, common sense will tell us that the normal force has to be higher than the weight, which is what it is in this case. So I got a normal force that's pointing straight up and let's say that long. The weight that points straight down is not quite as long. So now I've got an F net that acts in the upward direction, which is a result of adding these two vectors as vectors. 
and that would correspond to an acceleration upward which means the object will be speeding up so far so good well let's imagine if we maintain the situation where the normal force remains larger than the weight what would happen then well as we see here that will result in the person accelerating in the upward direction forever and ever which means they will be speeding up all the time that would make us really uncomfortable in an elevator car we don't want an elevator car that speeds up all the time we want it to start from rest speed up to a comfortable cruising speed and then maintain that speed so in order to maintain a constant speed the normal force would have to adjust down to equal the weight so that the net force is zero which results in a constant speed in the upward direction okay one more point here in our previous examples of working with elevator cars we had tension as a force in this case we did not why is that well that's because the rope is not directly tied to the person the rope is tied to the elevator car so if our elevator car was the object of interest as we went around its boundary tension would be the force that the car feels but this person is not hanging from a rope so the person is not feeling a tension the person is interacting with the floor of the elevator car and the only force that comes from there is the normal force not tension okay let's just round out this example with the situation when the elevator car is still moving up but slowing down as it reaches its destination floor so here's the motion diagram corresponding to it I'm first going at a faster speed and as I move up I'm slowing down in order to come to a stop at my destination floor and as we have seen before a velocity vector that's pointing up and but slowing down as time goes on implies an acceleration in the opposite direction so the acceleration in this case will point straight down even though the object is moving up which then leads us to expect that the net force has to point straight down remember the net force direction and the acceleration direction are always the same so in order for the net force to point down the free body diagram in this case would look like so here's the person being represented as a dot so here's the person's weight that acts straight down and by the way that's the same length in all these three examples the person's weight does not change in these different situations but now in order to slow down the normal force has to ease up and be less than the weight so here's the normal force here's the weight and just to not confuse the different normal forces let's go ahead and label them as normal one here normal two here and normal three here to represent the different normal forces in our three different examples so we'll label the example of going up at the constant speed as one going up and speeding up as two and going up and slowing down on reaching our destination floor as three so here are the three free body diagrams in all three cases I only have two forces normal force and weight the weights the same in all the cases the normal force when you're moving up and speeding up is larger than the weight when you're moving up at a constant speed is equal to the weight and when you're moving up and slowing down is less than the weight all of that corresponds to the net force matching the direction of acceleration which controls whether the object is speeding up or slowing down so we've used the simple and common example of riding in an elevator car to make a couple of key points with respect to free body diagrams first in order to determine the forces that act on an object we need to focus on the object of interest which is why in this case we have normal force acting and not tension as you might have first expected secondly we took various motion scenarios to discuss how net force impacts the motion of the object whether it is speeding up, moving at a constant speed, or slowing down. Thank you.